Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. In Cold Fusion's early days, back in the early to mid 2010s, a lot of Android phones would make their way onto the channel. One very common feature among these phones was user replaceable batteries. At the time, carrying a spare battery in your pocket wasn't that unusual of an occurrence. But have you ever wondered what happened to that? Nowadays, thanks to industry wide design changes, glass, glue, and metals have become the industry standard for materials. Because of this, easily replaceable batteries are no longer possible. This has just been the way things have been for the better part of a decade. But things are about to change. In a sweeping new law by the European Parliament, replaceable battery products will be forced back into fashion. The law will have an effect on phones, tablets, and laptops, not just in Europe, but worldwide. In this episode, we'll take a quick look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. In June of 2023, the European Parliament voted 587 to 9 in a bid to force all consumer devices to have easily replaceable batteries. Easily replaceable means that the battery changing process should require no special tools. This means manufacturers can no longer use adhesives. The direct quote from the EU is that battery replacement should require, quote, no tool or set of tools that is supplied with the product or spare part or basic tools. The process for replacement shall be able to be carried out by a layman. Almost all smartphones today are designed like a glass sandwich. This was the design that was settled upon as the smartphone market matured. The glass sandwich method of construction is sleek and thin, but relies on an extensive use of adhesives. This law would mean that the very fundamentals of how companies design phones will need to change. Unless companies figure out a new way to build the same phones without adhesives, manufacturers from Apple to Google to Samsung will be affected. Foldable phones will face a huge challenge when trying to comply with these laws, so we'll have to wait and see on that front. So how does the law in the EU possibly affect the rest of the world? Well, it's likely that phone manufacturers aren't going to design a specific phone for the EU. Reason being, it's expensive, so it's going to eat into their profits. Apple, for example, is unlikely to design a European iPhone with a replaceable battery and another iPhone with a sealed battery for other regions. This EU law will have a rippling consequence across the world. But it goes further. The law also affects tablets, laptops, EVs, e-bikes, and basically anything with a rechargeable battery. In July of 2023, the law was approved by the European Council and will come into effect in 2027. This gives over three years for manufacturers to get their act together. This will be an especially big change for Apple, who have never featured removable batteries since the very first iPhone. Samsung stopped featuring removable batteries on their flagships back in 2014. So many people think that waterproofing and dustproofing will be much harder to achieve. But right to repair advocate Lewis Rossman argues some good points. So I'm old enough to remember when this was not a repair, but maintenance. And I'm also old enough to remember that society seems to have this collective amnesia regarding water resistance. There was an article going over this where it said that one needs to be aware that incorporating easily removable backs will mean these handsets will lose water resistance unless a well thought out design is undertaken. Again, selective amnesia for devices like the Samsung S5, which is IP67, or the Sony XP10, which is IP68. This device is IP68 with a user removable battery. Some others argue that removable batteries will make smartphones bulky and less premium. But the LG G5 proved that it was possible to make a phone thin, premium, and with a removable battery. Right to Repair Campaign's coordinator, Christina Gnappi, calls the ruling, quote, a big success for Right to Repair. For those of you unfamiliar, Right to Repair is a movement that calls for consumer goods to be easily repairable. We've all seen the trend. When your TV or phone is broken, it's more common for people to just buy a new one instead of repairing it. This is due to the components becoming more complex and integrated over time. But some companies are straight up anti-consumer. In this context, Apple is the biggest culprit. If you own a later model iPhone and the screen breaks, and you go to replace it with a perfectly good screen from the same model, Apple will disable some features and warn you that it's not genuine. The same goes for replacing the battery or camera, and even if they are genuine parts but don't have the same serial number, things don't work as they should. This wasn't the case for older Apple products. It's an effort to make their users send their devices only to Apple so an exorbitant fee can be extracted from consumers. Further to this, 
Apple does not supply diagnostic software, and they've even raided repair shops for having a large stock of genuine repair parts. Let's say that in your MacBook, you have a broken display flex cable. Apple intentionally connects the display flex cable in such a way that you can't just replace the cable. You have to replace the entire display. And this can cost over $700 wire to it. We're looking at a flex cable. A flex cable that is less than 50 cents. I'm telling people, I'm telling technicians that get paid 30 to 50 dollars an hour, spend an hour trying to fix this flex cable that costs 50 cents because we're not allowed to replace it. So if the pads are missing, we have to start scraping away with a dental pick and hope that we can solder a little jumper wire onto a flex cable to reattach it to a chip that was corroded that we then have to file away at to get to the metal because I can't put a new 50 cent hall sensor on that person's MacBook, because if I do, it won't work. I understand the argument for Apple wanting safer repairs, but should this mean that even a qualified external repair technician should be blocked from helping people with their damaged devices? Of course, Apple isn't the only company that does this, but for the context of this story, they're the most relevant. So what's the intention of this law? The new law isn't for consumers as much as it is to protect the environment. Today, when a phone's battery dwindles after a few years, it's much easier for the common user to just buy a new one instead of repairing it. Over 50 million annual tonnes of e-waste is generated this way. The European Parliament is making sure that the environmental impacts of batteries is considered. They're aiming to create a circular economy for batteries. This means that in a product life cycle, as little as possible of the battery's raw materials should be wasted. Here are some rules covered by the law pertaining to replaceable batteries. Phone manufacturers will need to collect 63% of portable batteries that would normally go into landfill by the end of 2027. Lithium recovery from waste batteries will need to be at 50% by 2027. And EV batteries will need to be made of certain percentages of recyclable content. Initially, 16% cobalt, 85% lead, 6% lithium, and 6% nickel. All batteries should have a recycling efficiency target of 50% by 2025. This all sounds fine, but the first point seems difficult. Getting consumers to responsibly give their older phone batteries back to the manufacturer will be tricky to enforce. We'll have to see. So it's unlikely that there's going to be any changes in the next few months to a year. But after this, smartphone makers will have to start gearing up for compliance with the new law. We'll start to see the results of these efforts over the next few years. I did say earlier that it's unlikely that manufacturers will design two different phones, an iPhone for Europe and another for the rest of the world. But anything is possible, really. It's also going to be fascinating to see what happens to laptops, e-bikes and EVs. Regardless, things are going to be shaken up in the next few years. And an interesting question that I pose to you is do you think that the phasing out of user-replaceable batteries was just the natural progression of design as dictated by consumer demand? Or are these changes motivated by profit, resulting in anti-consumer products? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you want to see another Cold Fusion episode on battery recycling, I'll link that below. Oh, and the third and final episode of my AI series with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation will be live soon. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.